friends, welcome to Freedom in a Budget. I'm Kelly and today we're gonna to talk about how my husband and I are saving 56% of our income, how we're trying to grow that and how we're trying to reach financial independence. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks, what we're doing, what we're doing in efforts to grow it, to increase our savings rate and what we are saving for. But before we get into that, if you're new, welcome to Freedom in a Budget. I'm Kelly and I make videos three times a week on how a budget can give you freedom, how a budget doesn't have to be constricting and hold you back from the things that you want, but how it really gives you freedom and helps you to achieve your goals. I absolutely love budgeting and I can talk about it all day long. So be sure to subscribe if you're new, be sure to hit that bell icon so they get notifications every time that I upload. Also check out my blog at freedominabudget.com. I will have a blog blog article for this video where I share even more tips and tricks and dig deeper into how I'm able to save 56% of our income and just kind of dig in a little bit deeper. So be sure you check that out, freedominabudget.com. So like I said, we're saving at 56% of our income and we are trying to save for a house right now. There's been different times in our life where we were saving for a wedding and cash flowing our wedding. And then after that, we started saving for a new car for me and bought my dream car, which is a Jeep and paid for that in cash. And now we are saving for our first home. We are renting currently and ready to buy our house. A lot of people, when we first got married, was pushing buying a house. And even when I was in my mid twenties, they were pushing for me to buy a house. And I was like, you know what? I'm just not ready. I didn't have that emergency fund, which now we do. I didn't have, you know, just the life skills of owning a house. And I just, I feel like I wasn't financially ready. So many people are just pushing buying a house, but I'm really big on not doing it until you are ready. And it can be very smart financially to rent. And for us it was, but now we are at the point where buying a house just makes more sense for us. And is the the better financial decision for us. So we are currently saving for a house. We currently have $40,000 saved and we're gonna be saving another $20,000 before we start that process. And we are going to be needing, like I said, $60,000 for closing cost down payment. And then we wanna have like 10 to 20,000 of upgrades if we need to do the floors, if we need to upgrade a kitchen, depending on that. We're not sure you know, what type of house we are gonna be buying. I prefer not to do a fixer upper, at least right now a fixer upper would be so much fun in the long run but right now we just want to move into something that's a little bit more move and ready but be prepared if we do need to make some upgrades so that is where we're at all right so first thing that makes us have a really high savings rate is we don't have kids we are dinks or dual income no kids so my husband and i both have full-time jobs and i had this youtube business as well so we really have three revenue streams and we are able to bring in all that income and not spend it on kids now that's not an excuse for people that do have kids when we do we plan on making really smart financial decisions with our kids as well and not only in the frugal ways that we're gonna be raising them, but also the money knowledge that we're gonna be teaching them and things like doing kids commission versus allowance, teaching them the importance of having a job when they're mid early teenagers. I started working when I was 14 and I didn't get a cell phone until I was able to pay for it 100% in full. I wasn't getting money to go out with my friends. Like so many of my friends would their parents be like, yeah, here's 20 bucks, go get some food and have some fun. Yeah, that wasn't me. I was working and so I had to pay for my own clothes my own food, everything like that. When I, food as in eating out and not like food as in groceries, but food as in eating out. The only time my parents would buy me clothes was Christmas or my birth. So everything like that, back to school shopping, I always had to do for myself at 14 on. And so just teaching those money decisions. I'm so thankful that I had that and not just my parents' credit card that I could rack up bills and do that. So all in all, we are taking advantage of not having kids right now and trying to save as much as possible in that time frame. Number two is we're on a written budget and doing that, tracking all of our spending, it really puts the spending that we're doing in the forefront of our mind. So for instance, shopping. I love shopping as much as every other girl and my husband probably loves shopping more than I do, but that's beside the point. So for us, what we do is we put clothing into our budget. We have a line item for clothing so that we can go out and spend money. We can go out and buy the cute tops that we want to and not feel guilty. Before we started doing this, every time that we'd go to Target, 
Target or Marshalls or to buy shirts like that, we would feel guilty and it'd be like, oh crap, we could have put that money to something else. But no, at the beginning of the month, the money is set aside and we can go and we can spend freely as long as it's within the constraints of what we have allocated in our budget. If you're interested, I do have my Excel budget on my Etsy shop for $5. This is the budget that got me out of debt, cash on my wedding, cash on my Jeep, and now saving for a house. I've used this budget for several, several years and have tweaked it and got it I think pretty much perfect. I absolutely love this budget. It is a game changer. So go check out my Etsy shop if you want it, $5 on there. It'll be linked down below in the description box. Next up, compound interest is your best friend when you are out of debt. When you're in debt, it is your worst enemy. Oh my gosh, compound interest. My student loans, they grew probably $10,000 from interest and compound interest and deferring my loans. And that was terrible, absolutely terrible. And I hated interest, I hated compound interest. It just drove me nuts. I think my student loans were six and a quarter percent interest, which is just terrible. So now that we are debt free, any interest that we get, I love. Interest has been a total game changer in shifting our mindset. Because now that we're debt free, any interest that we see, it's 100% in our favor. And compound interest is working for us. It's working for us in our investments. It's working for us in our sinking funds. It's working for us in our savings accounts. We keep all of our sinking funds and everything like that in our Capital One 360 account so that we can see it grow and have that money working for us. We're currently keeping our down payment fund in that Capital One 360 account so that we can get interest on it and have that interest built every single month, which is so cool. When we were in debt, oh, the interest, it killed me, absolutely killed me. The next reason we are able to save so much of our income is we pay cash for used cars. And it is a game changer in just the depreciation. We are not paying that depreciation, other people are. I do not want to do that. I did that one time when I was in college and I had a Ford Focus that just everything was going wrong with it, everything. It was the car that was given to me in high school and the fuel pump went as I was driving from Massachusetts to Florida and Palm Bay and I had to drive 120 miles in a tow truck because it was just, didn't work. And then after that, more and more things set on breaking and I didn't want to invest money. So I said, I don't want to buy a used car. I don't want to inherit someone else's problems. I want brand new. So rather than someone talking me out of it and explaining how I could get like a two-year-old, three-year-old, five-year-old car and still have it be really new and not get those. And I was like, no, I want brand new car. I don't want anyone else's problem. So I brought a brand new Nissan Versa and spent a lot of money on it. And I was the one that was taking that depreciation. And yes, I drove it for 10 years, but still it was a lot of money and I paid way more for it than I should have. So we just bought our Jeep Cherokee with cash. It was a 2016. And honestly, everyone, t every time someone gets in the car, they're like, holy cow, this is amazing. And they feel like it's brand new and they think it's brand new. And I'm like, no, it's three years old. And I absolutely love it. It's it's an incredible car. I love that we paid cash for it. The feeling of driving off that dealership, not owing a penny to anyone that we saved up, we paid cash was incredible feeling. And I will, I won't change it for the world and we will never buy a new car again. No, absolutely not. Next up is we shop at Aldi for our groceries. Now this one is a little bit different and some people are hesitant about shopping at Aldi. I recently did a video comparing Aldi to name brand stores like Publix. And I found that Aldi was about 40% cheaper than Publix, which is incredible. And it's a game changer. I absolutely love Aldi. It does take a little bit to get used to in the beginning, but once you do, it is so good. And you absolutely love their products, love their mission behind their store and everything like that. If you don't have an Aldi in your area, be sure to check for a discount grocery store, an Amish grocery store, anything like that. It's really gonna help save you a lot of money. It's going to really increase your savings. Grocery budgets are a budget killer. So many people spend way too much money on groceries. We spend $200 a month for my husband and I, and it's, it's amazing how we are able to keep our grocery costs so low, eat really good quality products, so many of their products are organic or gluten-free. They have so many amazing brands and really, really good, high quality foods. Do some research in your area and find a discount grocery store or an Aldi 
take some time go when you have a lot of time to poke around in the store don't be rushed and i think it's gonna be a game changer for your budget the next way we are able to save 56 percent of our income is all of our raises or bonuses they all go towards savings jamie just got a ten thousand dollar raise at his job so proud of him and all of it went to our savings we didn't increase our lifestyle anymore we didn't increase grocery we didn't increase eating out or personal spending money no everything stayed the same and then any extra money it's going right to our sinking funds right to our savings to our down payment fund so anytime you get a bonus anytime you get anything increase your savings rate make sure that you're upping your retirement contributions upping your sinking funds don't increase your lifestyle every time you get a raise next is use dish towels and washcloths to clean up messes we do not use paper towels we have we do have paper towels in the house i will admit we do and i use them primarily for cooking for like plotting grease in ground beef or ground turkey but one roll of paper towels will last us about six months it's crazy how much we can save on paper towels by just using dish towels if we're cleaning up a mess we use a dish towel we have a stack in our cabinet that we just keep them there it's so convenient so easy and it saves so much money on paper products we're not having to spend so cloth napkins washcloths, dish towels, all of that is so easy for cleaning. The next way we're able to save so much money of our income is we shop through places like Ebates. Guys, if you don't know Ebates, I'll have a link down below where you can get $10 for it for signing up. But Ebates is incredible. They give you cash back. I've made over $1,100 on Ebates. And every time that we have a purchase to make, we'll go on Ebates. Jamie will want to just buy it. And I'm like, no, 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 wait, we have to go on Ebates. And he's like, okay. And I will price compare. So say we're shopping for, I don't know, a TV. And so I'll look to see if it's cheaper at Target or Amazon. And sometimes it may be a little bit cheaper at Amazon, but when you factor in the 5% off on Target, when you use your red card, then I'll be like, oh, that's $3 cheaper and those little bits and pieces really add up and then shopping with Ebates every time that you're shopping you're getting cash back and a check that they give out quarterly and those checks they add up quick mine are typically a few hundred dollars and hey I'll take the few hundred dollars to go towards my sinking funds lastly shopping around for car insurance guys guys I know it's a chore I'm actually currently going through it right now of shopping around we just got our renewal for our car insurance and it went up significantly and I called and asked what the increase was and they said it because of all of the hurricanes in florida we've had i live in south florida so we had irma we had matthew and all these other hurricanes that it went up across the board and so i said okay not going to renew right yet i'm going to shop around so i did i called a bunch of places shop around and i found a other company that was able to save us eight hundred dollars a year eight hundred dollars and it took me 20 minutes and that is a game changer guys $800. So I recommend shopping around every six months or so. Also, be sure to ask your insurance company if they offer a discount if you pay every six months. I used to have Progressive, and if you pay your balance in full for six months, we saved about $300, and that was huge. Now it is a little upfront when you have to pay that big chunk of money in the beginning, but if you create a sinking fund and then putting in those couple hundred dollars each month, then it's not bad. You just pull it from your sinking fund. So that is huge. Now, even with Progressive's discount of paying it full, it was still cheaper to go to the other company. So we are switching, we are leaving Progressive, but that is huge. So shopping around for insurance. And I always thought that the one that we had was the cheapest. And you know, with that six month policy discount, but no, it wasn't. And so make sure that you shop around. You may think that you had the better deal, but others may may beat them out. So every few months, shop around and it is so easy. It's really not hard. And they are so willing to answer any questions that you may have. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know down below in the comments, what are some tips and tricks that you guys use to increase your savings rate? I would love to hear from you. I'd love to learn from you. Please let me know down below in the comments. Be sure to check out all the other comments and don't just leave a comment, but read the other ones. Learn from this community. You guys are incredible. You teach me so much every single time. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. I upload three times a week. Here are my social media handles and blog. Blog. A big shout out goes to Sharon C. Sharon, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.